Well, hello. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, Noel FM, to another episode of Novak Weekly Podcast. I'm your host, Marko Milenkovic, and joining me, as he does always, is my good friend from Italy, Mario Bocardi. Mario, welcome, buddy, again, and tell me, how are you? Hey, everybody. Uh, things are quite well, and I'm always excited to be here, so I'm really happy to, to be able to talk uh, with you once again. Yeah, I'd love to hear that. Uh, today's episode will be a shorter one since Novak is not playing. And to be honest, there hasn't been that many uh, big stories in the world of tennis. However, we will talk about those uh, Rafa Nadal interviews he did, uh, Andy Murray recent comment on IG. And we'll talk a little bit about the, the tennis basically returning back to China after a four-year hiatus. So give us a listen. Also, shout out to Hamad Medjedovic for reaching the semis in Astana. Uh, Hamad is playing his match against Sebastian Korda as we are recording uh, this right now. So good luck to you, Hamad. Uh, before we actually go into this, I'll ask you guys to like this video share it or leave your comments and feedbacks down below also do not forget to subscribe and turn that notification bell on that's basically the simplest way of supporting us in our work so thank you guys for that and now let's do this uh, mario let's talk uh, first of all uh, a little bit about the uh, easier subject <laughs> in today's episode so we'll start with as i said tennis basically returning to china after four years uh, hiatus um what do you think about uh, tennis, tennis in China, basically, and tennis and China relationship? Uh, okay. Uh, for me, it's not the easiest topic, to be honest. Uh, Why? Because there are, no, I mean, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of different topics. Um, talking about the, the ATP Tour, uh, I really have, you know, nothing to say. I am really excited to to watch tennis there um, I, I love those tournaments and so I I am super super happy very good memories from both for example Beijing and and Shanghai and in general uh, since you know a, a tennis lover uh, also regardless of who is playing just because I, I love the sport uh, I'm super super happy to uh, to be able to watch again um, some of the tournaments that uh, have, um, you know, b built uh, my my tennis memory and since when I started following tennis. So um, I'm very happy to to see the tennis back there. Um, there are a lot of questions, you know, also. Uh, on the women's side, uh, there was that situation two years ago with that tennis player, Peng Shuai. Um, it's, it's difficult because, first of all, uh, I really don't like to, um, to judge this kind of situation when, uh, you know, when we are talking about a culture that is different from mine. At the same time, you know, I... Um, I haven't really been assured that the uh, that woman is one hundred percent free to 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 speak or whatever. Uh, so I'm, you know, in some way, uh, I mean, regardless of my opinion on that, I still think that the WTA has kind of um, had. Uh, and a weird situation because in 2021, uh, Steve Simon, the, the CEO of the Women's Tennis Association, was very harsh on that, saying that, um, you know, tennis wouldn't have been back to China until that issue uh, would be resolved. Uh, but then money prevailed. And so even if I don't think that they've been really, really... Uh, reassured about the situation but still you know uh, they couldn't uh, couldn't resist uh, and they came back so i don't i don't really know um, i don't want to judge the situation regardless of you know that player the government the country uh, but still i think that the the, um, the women's tennis association has not really been stayed true uh, to uh, to their words 
um, and so you know it's it's a bit of a of a weird uh, thing. Um, but overall, I am really happy to to be able to watch again these tournaments, uh, yeah. which I think are great. Yeah, what do you think the the future of the tennis in China looks like? Because it uh, the sport has been growing in the recent you know years and decades, but the country was still unable and is still unable to produce any uh, a top level talents, especially on the male side. We had Lina, who is now a member of the International Tennis Hall of Fame, but on the men's side, you know, not uh, not not that big of a success. Why why do you think that that's the reason and do you think it'll change in the future? Uh, okay, uh, let's say uh, like this. Um, talking about uh, a great, great champion like, you know, you were talking about Lina. Uh, I think that it's also a little bit a matter of, I mean, your own abilities, your own talent, uh, uh, the team that you, um, that surround you. Uh, overall, I think that they are in in a good place right now because uh, if you have, they have a couple of top 100 players on the ATP uh, side. They have uh, a lot of female good players because the, there is Zhang Qingwen, uh, which is a big talent, but also a lot of other solid players in the top 100, like um, Xing Yu at Xing Yu Wang. Um, uh, you know they 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 won the gold medal both in um, in the female um, in in the women singles of the Asian Games uh, and also on the men's side, which has not been the case uh, lately because it's first time that this happened since a long time ago. Uh, so um, let's say also a reality of, uh, that you know um, home tournaments. Uh, help in this case because you know they you can um, you can let your players have some experience play on the big stage at times um, so I think that overall um, I I think the tennis in China is is quite in a good place then of course um, you know having a prodigy. He, is also a little bit a matter of luck sometimes because you can uh, you can you know help a lot of players to grow so bring a lot of players in the top 100 for example um, on the female side this is truly happening on the men's side you know not so many but uh, there is still something um, and then you know uh, it kind of also depends on on the individual um, so overall, I think that the, the tennis in China is growing uh, quite quite well, I will say that. Yeah. Uh, by the way, as you guys all probably know, Novak is not playing in China this year. So that's a, a big bummer for, for us, for all of us, especially for me, honestly, because I had a plan to actually go and attend uh, the Shanghai Masters as a member of the media. So Novak <laughs> screwed me over a little bit, but never mind, I forgive him. Uh, also, if you have been following our uh, socials during the last couple of days, I put out a, to me, that's this is a fascinating states, uh, stat, sorry, about uh, regarding Novak and his play in uh, China, especially China Open. Uh, Novak is the only player to have won the title six times and holds the distinction of having never lost a match at China Open. Uh, Djokovic also holds the record for consecutive wins with four titles, which is quite impressive, in my opinion, to having to have won a tournament six times and basically never lose a match. So he's basically six out of six uh in in beijing in shanghai it's almost you know no different he uh has won it four times more than anyone uh in in uh, men's tennis history so i was really hoping that he will be playing this year but i guess we'll have to wait we'll have to wait until until next year mm -hmm. uh okay let's talk uh, a little bit about those uh rafa nadal interviews which you know <laughs> started a lot of comments 
in the past in the past couple of couple of days and weeks and we actually planned on talking about it with tony last week but uh we never get the chance tony had to go uh, he had uh, his obligations so we ended up you know leaving that topic that subject for uh today's episode which i do think it's uh, it's a good thing we did so uh before i ask you for your opinion uh i'm just going to read a couple of uh, his comments basically his quotes uh during his interview he did with movistar plus in in uh, spain so he said that uh when asked about novak uh, reaching 24th uh, grand slam title he has he said that he's uh, i'm not frustrated for a simple reason within my possibilities i have done everything to make things as good as possible and then when uh the interviewer uh basically said that you know rafa you can be uh, uh you can be frustrated with having uh, won 22 grand slams he said yes you can live frustrated with 24 grand slams for example novak lives it in a more intense way for him it would have been a greater frustration not to achieve it and perhaps that's why he achieved it uh what were your what was your uh, instant reaction when you read those uh, those comments from Rafa. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, a bit of contrast feeling. Uh, you know, at first uh, you get, in my opinion, um, you get hurt by the way you think. Um, you can think that he's basically saying. Uh, I I don't care if I let's say lost the race even if he's not uh, still retiring so we we can't say you know the last words still uh, at least arithmetically even if the mm, you know um, the perception is that mm, the thing is is quite done but you you can never know um, and overall the thing that. Uh, let's say um, uh, Novak as the let's say the obsessed for for the records and all these things. Uh, I think that um, the big issue uh, has been that uh, the media have already created that image of Djokovic, and I think that exactly. if you take those words out of the word context and you, let's say, just place them in the interview, um, you can you can think that, uh, and this has been just my personal perception, that it's also, um, you know, a credit that he is given to, um, to Novak, uh, meaning that, um, let's say, a lot of times, in tennis, in football, in in, in other sports, um, we are also saying uh, he's um, one of the reason why he has won is that he wanted it more, and it's not a, ne a negative thing to say. Um, it's also you know recognition of the the hard work, the perseverance, the uh, let's say also the ability of um work super super well on his fitness trying to prevent injuries uh, and trying to you know put a useful schedule in order to um get to the grand slams in the fittest possible way um so in my opinion there's also a positive way uh of what has been said meaning that uh, wanting the record more is also um, something that uh, lets you achieve that. Also, when you say, for example, uh, without, uh, uh, let's say, Roger and Novak, Rafa wouldn't have been that successful or otherwise. Without no, that's, that's 100% well, true. Uh, without Roger and Rafa, Novak wouldn't have been that successful. And it's true because... Um, you have to want something in order to, to do your best to, to achieve that. And Novak has been amazing. And I think that overall, I think that, um, let's say this, uh, I'm not talking about obsession because I don't like that word. It's totally wrong because, um, um, but why, why know, do you think like, he, why, why do you, why do you think he said it? 
And it's not just obsession, but frustration as well. Yeah, I mean, he, he used that word frustration and probably could have used a, a kind of a better word. But I also think that um, it's, uh, you know, it, it was not meant to be, um, let's say, uh, an insult towards towards Novak. It, in my opinion, it, it wants to, to mean like uh, I don't know, kind of kind of telling that he. Uh, let's say that, yeah, I think that he, it kind of um, you know saying the thing that Novak seemed to be that record more, and I think that the media perception the story media have created have made these words uh, even worse than than what they they actually were in my opinion i think that a lot of comments regarding novak and regarding you know this tennis um let's say gota <laughs> um has been sick sickened by you know what the media have been told us for 15 10, 15 years. Uh, and so right now, everything that everyone says, uh, of course, um, it's linked to, to, to those words media have been telling us for, uh, for the past decade. And so, of course, the fans get, you know, quite mad. Um, and yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> this was... This was not the first time that Rafa did something like that. And I I usually try to stay objective and moderate, honestly. That's why when we'll, when we'll talk about Andy Murray comments, I have way less issues with uh, what he did than what Rafa did. Uh, this was not the first time that uh, Rafa basically uh, uh, did something like this, a, a backhanded compliment. We have a history of that. If we go back to the U.S. Open when Novak was defaulted, I'm going to quote Rafa again uh, when asked about, you know, how did it happen and, you know, why did it happen? This is, this, these are Rafa's words. But in some way, you should not be doing this. It's very unfortunate, very unlucky situation. But it's important to have the right self-control on the court because if not, you can be unlucky. So in this, basically, in this quote in this uh, statement he says that Novak was unlucky but had but then he follows it with you need to have the right self-control which implies that Novak did not and does not have a self-control uh there was also a situation when Novak created the uh PTPA in 2020 uh yeah. I think that uh during that day or one day or uh, after or before when the, the whole thing was basically launched, he put out a tweet that says, the world is living a difficult and complicated situation. I personally believe uh, these are the times to be calm and work uh, all of us together in the same direction. It's time for unity, not separation. Which again, and again, as you said, this is just my opinion. Yeah, yeah he, no, of course. He, pulled, he points out that what Novak is doing and was doing was basically creating a separation in the tennis world, which both you and me and millions of other people know that that's not the case. Uh, what else? Now, for me, it's, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, analyze situation by situation. The two situations you have just said, for me, are a little bit different than this one. But of course, I can get what you say. Um, for me... I be, I will be, let's say, t totally honest uh, D, with you all. D. If I, if I, if I were uh, a super successful tennis player like them, I couldn't stand my main rival. <laughs> to be honest, I think that it's, um, it's kind of um, of a normal thing. I think that the, the issue is that in tennis things works. In, in a different way from other sports. For example, if in football we have this kind of, of drama, um, fans, people, journalists um, seems, seem to like it. Um, and, you know, yes, there are the, the angry fans, but 
you know, in the same way, um, there's not the, you know, the, the judgment is not that harsh as it is in tennis. And I'm, I'm talking also about a lot of Novak situation. But that's because that's because that's because tennis is an individual sport, sport yeah, as opposed yeah, it's to right, football, but as you said. Let's say like this: I am totally okay with um, you know the greatest tennis players of all time not really you know liking each other. I am totally okay with this. I love that, and um, it's a, I, I always hate it when they congratulate each other because if you are that big, no. honestly. No, I for hate me it. Not. For me, because it's if, different. Because if you're that, as you said, if you're that big of a competitor, if you're basically racing against each other to be the greatest player in the history of your sport, you can't be happy to put out a statement like that. So, no, I mean, congratulations is not, um, let's say, for me, it's not, you know, doesn't it's just, show it's that just, you are happy. But, it, it, um, but it's a PR statement. It's nothing, it's nothing, it's, it's not, you know, anything. Uh, than that it's basically a pr move it's yeah but that's why i don't really uh that's why i don't really like you know uh to talk about all these things but because for me it's you know very few things are uh, let's say authentic and uh and real in tennis for example i i've always liked um novak because i i've always found in him uh, a lot of those authenticity in his character, his personality, uh, his behavior. Um, but I can understand that um, since it's it's really difficult uh, to, to to act like that. Um, I understand that no, not everyone can can feel in that way, and I also you know get that um, I am. Yeah, let's say, who am I to <laughs> to judge these kind of things? I just want then, uh, let's say, media and people to to be transparent and to to judge the things in in the right in the right way. Um, but that's never going to happen in in cases like this, and you know it. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's right. That's totally right. So. My opinion is that uh, that quote could have been avoided um, because you know that even if you know you are in a Spanish uh, TV show, but still, since you are who you are, all the world is listening to you. Um, so it could have been avoided. It could have been used another word, and that's for sure. But at the same time, I think that beyond the line, there's still something, you know, that, um, let's say, Novak fans uh, can read as why um, <laughs> their idol has reached those heights in tennis. And I think that overall, um, even if I agree with, with what you say, I still think that, um, let's say, that saying this, he kind of diminished um, his willingness to, to reach the record. And it's not a, a very, very good thing, even for him, in my opinion. So um, on this one, I'm a bit, um, let's say, let's say moderate because Mm. I can, you know, I, I can understand why he is saying this. Then, of course, I want objectivity in the judgment. And, uh, you know, if if Novak says uh, this thing in another circumstance, and I, I still want the same, you know, treatment and, and judgment. I would like that. Uh, but talking about this one... Uh, I totally agree with the fact that he could have used another word that, um, you know, probably there is also a little bit of a frustration. Uh, I, I think the there is. Uh, but overall, let's say that, uh, you have to accept. And I think that 
um, when you have to uh, to accept a thing like that, it's also you know you uh, you also have to uh, to tell yourself this this kind of things even because you ha we have to understand how um, how how difficult this slam race has been for all the three uh, players and this for um, Nadal and and Djokovic I would say because for Federer the the vast majority of his slams came when this race it was not on because Novak was at only one slam Rafa was at five six seven was still far away uh, for for Novak and and Rafa for me has been really really exhausting this race because you know all your career all your uh, you know tennis experience more than a decade chasing 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 the record trying to win the slam more to slam more um it's it's really been exhausting and and i can totally understand why um both let's say both uh could have been uh frustrated um to to not have let's say the record so I think that Nadal did not say the wrong thing about Djokovic. For me, he said the right thing about Djokovic but because I believe in the frustration he, he could have felt, uh, he could have felt uh, for not getting the record. Who? No. But is, yes. But, but, but just, for me, but just for me, but no, I'm telling you, sorry. But okay, for me, okay. it would have been a frustration even for Rafa. And so he's saying the wrong thing about himself, in my opinion. But he's just listen. I don't have problem. I don't have issues with many comments he said. First of all, the one when they asked him if he did not congratulate him and will he, he said no, which I'm fine. the The reason why I have problem with this is because it's a flat out lie, and it's easily to check. I mean, we could have seen that last year when Novak did that famous oh, yeah. interview. Totally. When Novak did that famous interview with BBC. When the reporter basically asked him, are you willing to basically let go of sacrifice your chance to become the greatest player? Well, he said no. So he was able to miss his chances. And he did miss. He, mi he missed two grand slams. Well, uh, that's for sure. That's while, for Rafa, sure. while Rafa Nadal on the other side was the one who was taking extraordinary measures to win as many Grand Slam as he can. We we know the the uh, thing at the Roland Garros. So he was taking you know all those shots. But when he said that basically he his foot was almost dead, we know his comments in the previous years. You know that he would die to win another uh, Grand Slam. Of course, the, of course, those things are uh, a little bit hyperbolic. But you know the statement still stands. Novak, if we're talking about these two, Novak was the one. And I'm, I'm not saying that he doesn't care. Of course. He has always, and that, that's, that's the, the thing I probably like uh, the most about him, not his authenticity or whatever, that he is, sticks to his guts. He's been saying ever since he's, he was on tour, I want to be world number one. I want to be the best player of all time. And when the, came, when the time came for him to, to basically, when the time challenged his beliefs and his motives, he was the one who uh said and and show that he was not frustrated that he doesn't care that there are more important things in life life like he said his body and the the ability to make you know his own choices so that's the biggest uh problem i had with with these comments again i'm not saying that he's not obsessed i'm not saying that he doesn't want to achieve it he does actually and he did which is a good thing for us his fans but yeah, that's, that's what the, i was that's what i was saying I was saying that, yeah. you know, um, because more than a frustration, for me, frustration is the, is the wrong word. I would more say, let's say a regret, maybe, you know. Plus he was, mm. plus he was, plus he was not even asked about Novak. No, no, in that's, that, in that's that instance. He was the one who mentioned, basically, as I told you, he said, you know, Novak can be frustrated. Novak would be frustrated if he didn't achieve that, which is, again, you know, a flat-out lie, a complete no, nonsense. No. We have we have the records behind us. We have the history. We have, we have the decisions of you know these guys, and and we can judge them based on their decisions. So 
that's why I had the, the, the issues with his comment. Again, I'm no, not. No, no, no. That, that's I'm for, not sure. against... for me. For me here, uh, I will. I will tell. Sorry, just my opinion once again, and is that for me here the main issue is that he's telling a wrong thing about himself because I think that, and it's 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 normal in my opinion uh, to have some small, still small regrets because you know when you still have won twenty two Grand Slam you still judge your career in a positive way, of course. And it would have been, you know, for mad people to think otherwise. But I think that it's super, super normal that, um, you know, since you, you are behind in, in this slam race, you can feel a bit of, of regrets and a little bit of, of frustration. So for me, the main issue is that he's saying a wrong thing about himself more than about let's say um novak i no, i would uh, would say like that but not no, because you're, you're novak correct. would have been frustrated in my opinion but simply because even if and you know that i admire him a lot for his authenticity for the way he he, he put his belief um before winning uh, a couple of grand slam titles um and I admire and respect a lot this decision, and you know it. Uh, but still, I think that, of course, he, won he super wanted the record. He tried to do everything in his power to stay healthy, to stay fit, uh, to you know study his body super, super well in order to be able to arrive at 36, at 37, and still uh, you know challenge the youngsters and trying to win in Grand Slams, reaching the finals, winning a lot of titles still. So in, in this way, I think that he was super, super careful in order to win as much, uh, as many Grand Slams as, as possible. That's my my opinion. So I think that, um, yeah, still nobody nobody was asking him about, about Novak. But uh, let's also say that when you hold the record, uh, when you are, let's say, the greatest player of all time, you are, let's say, a term of comparison. Um, and so, you know, it's also normal that everyone is looking at him and comparing himself to, to him, because in this moment of the history, nobody has achieved as much that, uh, than Novak uh, in tennis. So he is the ultimate comparison for for everyone yeah uh basically after that movistar plus interview he did a uh, couple of days afterwards he did an interview with us which is one of the biggest spanish uh yeah. sports newspapers where where he kind of backtracked on his comment uh he said that i believe that numbers are numbers and statistics are statistics rafa said in that sense i think he meaning Djokovic has better numbers in mind, and that is indisputable. That is your truth. The rest are tastes, inspirations, sensations that one or the other may transmit to you, that you may like one uh, or the other more. I think that with respect to titles, no, Djokovic is the best in history, and there is nothing to discuss about that. Uh, again, I also think that this is kind of a uh, backtrack comments, comments, sorry, uh because again and and i hate this uh narrative that's being pushed in the last couple of maybe not a couple of years but year year and a half uh that novak is the best the greatest solely because of numbers i think that that narrative is going to continue uh i'm hoping that i'll be proven wrong uh but i hate it and i have to say that i am very disappointed in rafa not solely based on this interviews but again his actions in the last couple of years for example when i was a kid when i was younger i liked him a lot him and novak were friends uh we all know about it uh that was a story that even serbian media was being pushed and even when i was a kid when i was playing tennis i was playing like rough and my favorite racket was bubble up because of the the playing style that i that i shared with him uh but even novak spoke about you know that in in uh in the recent past because i think that even a couple of weeks ago he uh said something along the lines like uh you remember those early us open uh personation that he did of rafa roger maria sharapova he basically said that uh when these two 
meaning Roger and Rafa, or those two, were better than him and kicking his ass practically, they never had an issue with him uh, you know, impersonating them. But when Novak actually started to win in 2011 and afterwards, uh, they all of a sudden started to have issues with his actions, with his antics, with his words. And that's something that I really hate and something that I wanted to say for a while. I didn't have the platform. I didn't have the chance. So, yeah, here it is. Major, major disappointment in Rafa, who I always liked when I was younger. And if I had, if I was able to choose between Rafa and Roger, I always liked Rafa more because he actually had a relationship with Novak when those two guys were younger. But, hey, uh, you, can't ch you can't change the past. You can't change what somebody said, did, or, you know, what else? So, yeah. Uh, do you have anything to add uh, to this topic? No, let, let's say that um, I think that we, um, uh, since, you know, my, uh, my sociology studies and I, uh, I have been uh, thinking a lot about this, the fact surrounding the, the let's say, the, the GOAT debate and what people were saying. And I think that um, we are in, in a process. Um, right now, I am in a place in which, um, first of all, I look, but because I am, you know, mm, I work in this way. First of all, I look at, um, you know, the records, the, the, the trophies won, um, the things you have achieved on the court. And then, um, let's say um, also the, the impact you, you had on, on the game. And here I think that, that Novak is doing a lot and especially since, the, since he created the, um, the PTPA and also for, uh, let's say, oh, um, how carefully he takes care of his body. Uh, and I am sure that another tennis players have, have thought about this. Uh, I don't remember uh, if it was either Zverev or Tsitsipas, uh, one of the two. Uh, and basically, it told that um, since Novak, um, that there is among the, you know, the, the, on the tour, among the players, a new concept or, or um, of how it works when you have to to be careful in preventing injuries and to to stay fit and all these these things uh, and I think that this is a great impact on the game that um, that you had and since also let's let's say also Federer and Nadal had a super super great impact on the game when you have three personalities like that. Uh, you know, it's it's difficult to to not have an impact. You can have it for the fans, for the fellow players. Uh, but the thing I really like about Novak is uh, he is thirty six, and he let's say that even if he's still winning slams, he comes from let's say a past age of tennis. Let's say like that. Uh, yeah. But he's still super super involved in the tennis policy, in the relationship with the fellow players. He, he has a lot, I don't want to say friends, maybe is a big word, but he has a, a very good relationship with a lot of uh, super young players, a lot of respect, um, both male and, fe and female, because of, you know, um, he he's super linked with um, women's top players like Sabalenka, Badosa, Jabber. And it's very, very nice to watch. And I really like his side, this side of, um, of Djokovic, the way he, he, he still seemed to care a lot about it, even if he, he is at uh, the end of his career. And in this way, I think that he, he, you know, he's being a bit different from his, his rivals, uh, which I think they, they are a little bit outside of the um, you know the current policy policy of the game, so I really like the fact that uh, he he's still trying to you know to be present uh, as a legend of our sport in in the tennis policy, um, both supporting or you know 
saying his opinion in an opposite way than one, you know, let's say the tennis, I don't want to say establishment because for me it doesn't mean uh, a lot. But you don't, you don't like that word, huh? Um, that I don't want to say, you know, the tennis organizers um, are, are doesn't have, doesn't doesn't have the same weight as establishment. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm talking about the ATP. I, let's say like I, that. I know, I know what you, I know what you mean. I know what you mean exactly. And those are some. I terms. was trying like, to, I you know, I was trying to find the right word, <laughs> but yeah. I don't know if there is one. <laughs> Yeah, but never mind. I, I I completely agree with everything you said. But uh, le let's leave that topic for uh, next week's episode when uh, I was actually planning on talking yeah. about that with, with our guests uh, in, in more details. Uh, let's finish this episode with, uh, as I said, Andy Murray <laughs> IG comment about uh, Novax. For uh, those of you who don't know, which I think that most of you, if not all of you, know what happened, uh, Tennis TV actually posted this video on their uh, IG account uh, from uh, Shanghai Masters. I can't remember which year it was. Uh, when Novak basically hit Roger Federer on the back from the baseline. And there were, some, there were some comments, of course, uh, in their comment section. And the, the first one, the biggest one, was from Andy Murray. And Andy wrote the following. Totally legitimate play, great shot. However, when Rafa clocked him in Canada and Nori in Rome, he reacted like, how dare you, quotation mark. So first of all, what I wanted to ask you is, was this necessary? I mean, nothing is necessary. <laughs> let's, let's be honest, nothing is necessary. I mean, especially on the social media. Um... Why do you think, why do you think Murray decided to do that i have two different opinions about that because you know okay. when you're trying let's, let's... to ask yourself when you're trying to ask yourself given the interviews murray gave um in this you know recent recent past recent months uh, all the things he said about novak uh, uh Let's say that I don't think that this comment was meant to be like, um, oh, look at this, you know. Um, it, it wasn't a hater comment, if that's what you're trying no, to No, no, no. In my opinion, it, it was not meant to be a hate comment. Uh, because, you know, it would be totally in contrast with all the things Mari has been saying for the recent months. Um, so I think that there was irony in the comment. At the same time, um, so at the same time, I think that you know what you are going through when you post uh, this comment because you know how people, uh, how things work on social media, how you know people can, even if it's irony, understand or not understand the irony. Um, so my feeling reading the comment and also, you know, knowing all what Mari has said about Djokovic in the past, um, I think that it was an ironic comment. Um, but at the same time, I think that since you know the consequences or what you are doing, you could have basically avoided it. So that's, that's yes. my feeling. I, I have this kind of you know, um, uh, let's say contrasting opinion because I don't think that it was a mean comment um, because it would be, you know, strange. At least something hasn't ha has happened between the two right now, but I don't think so. Uh, even because, you know, they are not sharing a lot of, uh, a lot of on the tour. Um, Mari has been saying a lot of, of very good things about Novak for, this past month, I read a, a lot of interviews, even before you know the French Open, when he he literally said that he was supporting Novak to get to that twenty third yeah. uh, Grand Slam, and um, a few you know a few weeks ago he also said that his consistent level has been on another planet. A lot of very good things. I don't think that he it was meant in a mean way. 
at the no. same time, I, I repeat, in the same time, I will repeat that, you know, since he knows how things work in, in the social media world, he could have avoided it just because, you know, you, um, uh, you, you know who, he, who you are, uh, yeah. let's say, and you know how everything you say, um, regardless of the intention, uh, will be, you know, um, used to push narratives. Um, I mean, so... just, I mean, ju just just check the comments below, and you'll see. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and also also on Twitter. Um, so um, you know, um, both from let's say I don't know Nadal fans who basically took a screenshot and uh, told on social uh, on Twitter, oh. Um, Mari has just exposed Djokovic exactly. or from the Djokovic fans uh, themselves which basically you know got angry for that for example uh, so that's my opinion but overall I don't think that the comment was mean no, that's just uh, what I was saying it, it, it wasn't mean that's my opinion and I fully stand behind that uh, our Twitter friend <laughs> Scott Barclay actually said that you know uh, those two, you know, comments don't necessarily need to correlate. For, for example, Andy Murray can be right in this instance, but he can also be right when he says that Novak is the goat, which I agree with both. Uh, the reason why the reason why I had again I have to say issue with this comment is not that it's necessarily not true. To be honest, I agree with what Andy Murray wrote. It's a correct statement in my opinion, and I'll express that in. Uh, uh, in, in, in a couple of seconds but the reason why i had issues as i said is because what you talked about the narrative and you know how those you know haters and whoever in media always try to find the reason to hate him novak to expose him as you said to talk about him in a negative way and that's the that's the that's basically the the reason why i had issue with the con that's why I asked you at the beginning, is it necessary? It's not necessary. First of all, because Novak would never do something like that to anyone, let alone a friend like Andy, which I presume they are. I mean, they were. Andy was the only one who was present at Novak's wedding 10 years yeah. ago. So I still think that they have great connection. Andy Murray's mom, the great Judy Murray also, you know, has, has been always very praiseful when it comes to Novak. Uh, so that's my issue. When I said that this is uh, basically correct, I kind of agree. Uh, I didn't like that uh, Novak's reaction from uh, Canada, as um, uh, Andy put it out. can't remember if it was 2013 or 2014. 13, when 2013. 13, yeah, when Rafa hit him. Again, the circumstances, and a lot of people, especially Novak fans, have been pointing out on Twitter, you know, when Novak hit Roger in this clip, he was from the baseline and he hit him basically at, in, in the back. While between Novak and Rafa, they were both at the net and Rafa hit him in the head and the neck, which kind of is true. But I didn't like Novak's reaction, reaction at that point in time. Yeah, but at the same time, I have to disagree because, sorry, but, you know, you had in the heat of the battle. Uh, and so it's for me, it's, you know, it's okay to, let's say, react like that. But not because, you know, I don't think that in that moment you are, you know, thinking too much about in the past uh, or um, these things. But I think that, you know, that match was super, super intense. And uh, I know. And there's, me, of course, there... it, it can happen. There's Let's always, like you know, yeah, there's always a context behind, you know, you, we would have to go, you know, into that dig deep, you know, what happened in the previous weeks prior to that? Did somebody says anything? Was anybody, it was one of them angry at the other, but I still didn't like that. Honestly, uh, I, I understand his frustration. He probably felt even some pain, but he could have a reason, at least, you know, you know, risen his hand and said, you know, you know, it's okay. Fine. Honestly, listen, I love Novak to death. Honestly, no, because okay. <laughs> sorry, I, I'm laughing. Sorry, I just explain why I I feel to, to laugh a little bit because uh, I I love this kind of things on the court, the drama on the court. I am all here for it, and I like it. The drama off the court for me is tiring, and honestly, I don't like it. 
but on the court, I find it funny. For example, if if Novak would would do this again or do it, my reaction would still be started laughing thinking about the episode because for me it's it, it's funny. <laughs> no, <laughs> because, it is. But and... because for me it's it should work like that that you know then the match ends, you go to the net, you shake hands with the opponent and stop. That's how I like it. And I think that it's more or less how it works for uh, for Novak. Um, probably not the Cameron Nori situation, but it was a totally different one. For me, the two similar situations are the one with Rafa in Canada and the other one, it was still in Canada, I think, uh, with... Um, no, Shanghai was, I don't Shanghai. remember, with, uh, with Federer. Um, then I think the Nori situation was different because Novak was back to, you know, back to the net. So it, it, it was a different thing. Um, there was, you know, there was not the, um, the, the difficult situation of closing the point for Nori. He could have hit the smash anywhere on the court. Novak wouldn't have done anything. Uh, while in the other two cases, you know, there still was an opponent and the net ready to 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 reach the ball, to 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 hit volley and to try to get the point. So, for me, the two cases are different. Um, you know, I the, think the, you... the Nadal and Federer situations were similar between um, between each other, and the Nori situation was different. So I get why you know um, Novak then off the court didn't didn't like that, but. You know, those two situations, 2013 and 2014, was kind of similar. Um, and to be honest, I'm okay with that drama on the court. Even, for example, when uh, I remember there was uh, a beef between Mare and Fognini, a very famous beef in Shanghai, when one of uh, the two said, shut up to the other. I, I like that. I'm okay yeah, with that. Listen, <laughs> I, I love all of it. I love the antics. I love the trash talk. I mean, we spoke about that, you know, in the past episode. The only thing that, the only reason why I don't like his, this situation is because then Novak can complain if something like that happens to him, honestly. Again, the circumstances are never going to be, yeah, you know, but for me, for copied me, or mirrored. Just, but for me, it's different if you make a look on the court, and then if you complain off the court, if you complain off the court, yes, I would agree because I would say, well, but think about that. Uh, what happened, uh, you know, last year when in that tournament? But on the court, the point has finished like two, three, four seconds ago. I don't think you, you know, you think about what happened last year, two years ago, if you have done that, you, you know, probably you simply are pissed because you have lost the point also. I I would say it. so. Uh, that's that's fair. Although I do think that they remember uh, a situation like this, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, but, you know, I, st I still think... Mm, you know, different if you do a thing on the court and if you do it in an interview off the court. If, you know, for example, he would have gone in the interview off the court and say, uh, Rafa hasn't been a good sportsman today because he hit me. I would have said, oh, no, I mean, it's exaggerated. But on the court, the point has finished. For me, it's okay. That's what my do you opinion. Think, what do you think the reaction from the tennis world would, would have been if... Uh, Novak was the one who, who put out a comment like this. To be honest, I don't care because would have never happened with Novak. No, no, it is, it's 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 not the matter of you, <laughs> if you care of, or not, or if it would have happened or not. I'm asking you, what do you think, in all honesty, would have happened if Novak was the one who wrote a comment like this about anyone, Andy, Rafa, Roger, whoever? What do you think the, te the, the tennis headlines would be and the talk on tennis Twitter and and, and tennis media, basically. <laughs> Come on, give us your well, answer. Uh, that's the that's the again part that I hate about. That's it. for sure. That's for sure. We we all we have talked a lot, and we always talk about the fact that, especially from, let's say the the Western media, there is of course uh, um, uh, a, a double standard in this situation. That's for sure. Even because. Uh, with all the respect for Andy Murray, Murray is a tennis legend. 
e Novak is mm, even something more because yeah. you know we yeah. we watched at the Ryder Cup uh, uh, you know um, but by the way did, did, example, did, did you in watch Italy, that? Italy it, the Ryder Cup I just watched the all-star match <laughs> to be honest <laughs> <laughs> I haven't watched the real competition because I was watching tennis and and <laughs> that's right well, um, that's so he he kind of had an impact even in golf because I watched the the golf competition only because he was there trying to <laughs> to yeah, do the, something with the impact of Novak Djokovic. I was I was expecting a worse performance to be honest. I was not he very did. optimistic before the Ryder he, Cup. I was he did like, quite good. He did quite good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and before I was like, why is he going there? He he was going to to do shit. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Shame but on you for not believing in it. <laughs> but he surprised me. He surprised me. No, he did, he did quite good. Um, um, but no, talk, talking seriously, we, we know that. But for example, even in, let's say, I live in Italy, which is um, a, a Western country. And if you go on the street, I know that tennis is quite popular here. And that has to be said. But if you go on the street and ask anyone, do you know who Novak Djokovic is? Yes, they know it. Um, at least they know who he is. Let's say like that. I don't think not everyone knows how many slams he has and all these things. But everyone knows who he is. Um, and, you know, so this is even different work. But... Uh, of course, we have learned that there is, of course, a kind of um, of a double standard from from the Western media, and we have already spoken about the articles so after the French Open win, yeah. and that I didn't like, and all these things. So that's for sure. But you know, um, still, I think that, um, as you said. Um, he stays a lot away from from the social from the social media, um, and so yeah, basically okay. that's that's what what I think about the matter. Yeah, and you're one hundred percent correct. Okay, uh, let's wrap this up. Uh, I had a lot of fun today, honestly. Uh, I no, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Would... It's it's been difficult because you know that I am. Uh, for me, it's easier to talk when it's about the game, tennis, which are the things I, know, I follow. I uh, usually, when there's some drama on Twitter, I just close the app and don't open it for like four or five hours because I don't like really? this kind of, of social media drama. No, no, I love the drama on the court, but on the social, uh, I, I hate it. Uh, so for me, it was challenging. Uh, to to express my opinions about these controversial matters, <laughs> but yeah, I I but hope you, that you, I hope you to did. to have done a quite a good job. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think I think you did fine. I mean, we'll, we'll see the comments uh, uh, tonight and in 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 the upcoming days. So yeah, guys, please rate rate uh, Mario's comments and don't Mario's be very harsh on me, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's it for today's episode. I honestly hope you guys liked it. Mario, thanks you for joining me. Uh, and you. hopefully I'll see you in the next episode where I, I think we'll try to do a live stream next week with a couple of guests. So yeah, I'm not going to say anything else because it's not 100% uh, confirmed. Uh, but yeah, that's that's our plan. So goodbye in all FM and idemo. <laughs>